Welcome back, everyone. This is the Soccer Talk Wads podcast, and we are here to discuss the true heads of the table in Major League Soccer, <laughs> St. Louis City FC. Ian raising his ones to the sky, acknowledging the tribal chief that is Klaus, mm-hmm. and we are here mm-hmm. reunited. Not once again reunited in the same place because that is geographically impossible, but we are in three separate places in three separate cities. Uh, it is how cold is it out there? I'm, am I in the coldest spot tonight? Probably not, huh? It was like so. here in KC it was like 60 today, so you know, not it, not bad. It barely got above 60 here. Oh man, wow, you yeah. break out the winter coat. It's 51 right here, folks. This is oh, you might be close 59 and ball, 49 and ball, rather, still very close. It's like you're same. here. God, like these people, this, these people in this city, man, I can't oh, with no, their these freaking, people. their toleration of temperature. It's just, I walk outside with people, it's a 65 degree sunny day, and they're like, it's freezing out here. The word, <laughs> I hear the word freezing more often <laughs> on a day that St. Louisans would consider literally perfect yeah. than I could possibly fathom. <laughs> And every time I'm like, you, you know, freezing has like a definition. Yeah, right? 32, like 32 degrees, degrees Fahrenheit, zero degrees Celsius means, for our yeah. Canadian friends. Yeah, that's right. And that's they always say, yeah, but I don't care. So, you know, well, that, that's fair. <laughs> that sounds like a Florida motto. But that's fair. Uh, yeah, yeah, but I don't care. Ah, uh, well, uh, I am glad we're back to talk about the team that is, uh, I would say, turning up, starting to officially turn some heads in Major League Soccer. I mean, obviously, the um trivium that we are the head of the table right now with nine points out of our nine possible points is more you know a fun fact than anything that we think is likely to hold on I don't think any of us believe that uh St. Louis City will win supporter shield this year but ha- who knows yeah, yeah exactly <laughs> we'll let our insider comment on that but um I mean it's it's tough to deny that this is a team that's certainly already surpassed a lot of expectations for them coming into the season. And, you know, I mean, I think you can talk about quality of opponent, you can talk about whatever, but it feels like this is a team that could definitely be a playoff team. You know, I mean, they have nine points already. And Um, like 80% of the league gets into the playoffs anyway. So I think it's, it's pretty, it's pretty good. You're in a good spot. Yeah, for sure. So uh, let's go back and review our win over Portland FC in Portland. A tough road game, I'm told, but not tough enough for Klaus. Mm. Not tough enough for uh, St. Louis City SC. They fell behind early. It was another sloppy start. Um, Portland got back-to-back corner kits very early on and scored, I believe, in the third minutes. Third minute, um, Eric Williamson made them pay for their slow start by sending in a beautifully weighted ball for Zach McGraw to rise above the St. Louis defenders that surrounded him. I'm quoting Justin Horniker's mm. beautiful notes. Thank here. you. Thank you. Are these from an article that you wrote Ian or Justin? Excuse yes. Me? Yeah. Wow. Uh, I just, yeah, I took some of the stuff I wrote from area just because I, I went a little bit in depth and I figured, yeah, we, we want to go in depth here. Um, but yeah, it's another one of those things of like, they, started off like disjointed like they did in the first two games and this is the first time that they really kind of been made to pay for it and it was mm-hmm. concerning at the time but they figured it out yeah i mean i think um i was definitely worried after this goal that it was like the uh the honeymoon was over if mm. you will. <laughs> i was like uh oh we're playing oh, yeah. a real team now and they're like and all it's bad. over it yeah those first yeah. two minutes were very much like all octane from portland and, and uh, Portland, I realize this isn't probably the best team they've ever had, but they're a team that that feels like finally we're playing a real MLS team, you yeah. know, and, and I know Austin's supposed to be good and Charlotte is trash, just as I thought, they're trash, bad. They're, they're but, very bad. <laughs> um, but, you know, it felt Portland's got that kind of, uh, that kind of oeuvre, if you will, mm. of one of the real top dogs in MLS and playing on the road there, them scoring three minutes in, I was definitely feeling like, oh, geez, maybe this is going to be an early night for me because I would tell this story. This game started at 1030 local time. Uh, they have no respect. 
10 30 <laughs> on the night of daylight savings time jumping forward and i was supposed to wake up at seven to pick up a friend and drive to jupiter for spring training the next day which is a four-hour drive for me and i was doing all the driving so it was a real sacrifice to stay up and watch this team i just i just want to be acknowledged for that what if i known. yeah i commend your dedication steven yeah I but known. i did it i did it and uh i'm fr- i'm proud and glad that i did ian what were your takeaways after this first goal uh were was your tv turned on in time to see it and how nervous were you after it was scored it was on and I was nervous. Um, I don't know, because I think this game was the one that we had penciled in after the awesome game to be like the first loss. I'm still mm-hmm. waiting for every first loss now. Um, but it felt never it's never gonna happen. It might not, it might never happen. Um and I mean, I feel like the Timbers have a fair amount of clout around them. Like I don't even know if they're supposed to be that good this year but i was like well this is a real team this is a team i've mm-hmm. heard of before uh unlike austin fc um and it had me a little worried i mean they looked they looked like they were on the back foot for the first like half of this half first quarter of the game i'd say uh yeah. which was a little worrisome and also after like that big game at home too where you just mm-hmm. felt like invincible against a really shitty charlotte team you're just sort of like all right you had all you had all the feelings behind you, all the positive feelings. Then you go into uh, what do they call us? They have a name for this the stadium that's like a like a is it the buzz saw? <laughs> I don't it's gotta be right. I don't know. I don't know if there's a name. Okay, you go in here. There is a guy <laughs> with a freaking chainsaw sawing pieces of a log off next to their goal. I do kind of I like their dedication <laughs> to that uh i multiple times i was like oh he's starting the chainsaw again. timber joey with the sound of power tools throughout the game yeah oh yeah i loved it it really <laughs> paints a paints a picture but um i wasn't too worried yet because i thought you know what we've been scored on first in the last two games as well or at least or in the charlotte game at least and i was like oh yeah. i don't know about that you know maybe we can come back from this for the record, the nickname is the House of Pain. P A N E. That is not true. That's not because, a that according be to Wikipedia, <laughs> Gelled Win, which was the original na- name sponsor of the stadium, is a manufacturer of windows and doors. Hence, the nickname, the House of Pain. Oh, so I, I get like, it. I, I get it. Okay. That's true. P-A-N-E. Did you know? Nice. Bigger, more interesting point. Did you know that um, that stadium and or field has been in use uh in various forms since 1893 what <laughs> i did not know that get out Quite of here rig- get out Quite of here Wrigley field you're basic <laughs> you're basic um yeah so that's interesting portland being quirky once again you know how portland is that was a very interesting and fact uh, very quirky uh Justin, would you like me to continue reading your article or would you like to take over reading? Steven, would you be more comfortable if I read it? <laughs> I'm, I'm happy to read it. It's just a, it's whatever you prefer. Okay. You, I can I can roll it. into it. Okay. I will say, right. like, do you guys feel like the like going forward, if they have another like slow start, what does that tell you about like, your opinion on the team? It tells me that Mike Babcock is the coach of the St. Louis City. <laughs> we don't Bears. start on time. So <laughs> say that's maybe that's uh, Bradley Carnell's, you know, mo at this point. He can't get the team up. Uh, I don't know. Like they they do fine, or they've obviously won yeah. all their games. So like if that's how they if that's how they roll and they win, that's cool. But it is slightly concerning just because it could start with the snowball effect where, you know, it's not just one goal, it's two or it's even three. And then you're like, I don't know if we have the guns for that, especially yeah, with this like defense and back end. Like, I feel like it's, we're pretty lucky that it's only been, you know, what one goal this game, one goal last game, two goal, you know, that it's pretty yeah, and low they don't scoring. Let a lot of shots on goal, which like, I think cloud some of like what you see, but structure wise, like they don't let in, a lot of shots so like the shots they do get are usually high danger and anyway um but yeah they adjusted well in this game which don't mind me by the way i'm searching through puzzle pieces to find the last three border pieces because if i don't i'm gonna lose my mind all right so you know while steven takes a related puzzle while steven uh-huh. takes care of his ocd we will yeah. uh, <laughs> 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 
but yeah, they adjusted well in this game, just like they have every other game so far, getting back into the groove. The midfield setup in this game was different too. So this was the third different starting lineup under Bradley Carnell with... He's just toying with his opposition at this point. Yeah, just throw in everything out there. You know, we we had 23 guys. We can throw in whatever. So Edouard Leuven was kind of more in your attacking midfield role as the first two games he was back further in the midfield, which I thought was interesting because it changes the like entire way they operate going forward. So the midfield setup allowed Vasilev to roam upfield while Rasmus Alm and Jared Stroud are much more active in those wide spaces. And the first goal comes from, you know, getting Lewin the ball in stride as he kind of uses his vision to unlock Portland's back line. You see that when Ludwin gets the ball in motion, he's able to just like throw passes out to the wings and they are accurate every time. I don't want to interrupt you, Justin, but Edvard Leuven is very good at soccer. Mm, yeah. This yeah, game. I thought, I thought was, he looked really good up there, like in their yeah. more like attacking midfield. Yeah, I will say like this game, I think you noticed it more because he was like further mm-hmm. up the field. But yeah, his passing and his vision is incredible. Do you think they didn't start Blom because my one friend said he was bad last game? <laughs> yeah, they I didn't. think so. They I think Carnell, it. yeah, Carnell heard that the wins, uh-huh. the discourse <laughs> <laughs> was negative in Florida for some reason. <laughs> yeah, he's not he's not a you know a player's coach, he's a fan's coach. That's right. Yeah. Just what we've always wanted. We need someone to listen to the fans. That's right. <laughs> yeah, I don't think it's much to get worried about. They've like been pretty honest that he's kind of taking his time adjusting. They're taking their time, you know, getting him into the system and adjusting to a new country and a new culture is hard, I'm sure. So, in uh, other words, he's a bus. <laughs> no, because <laughs> he's been very good when he has played. No, you can be honest. He's a bus. We get it. Was he playing like recently, like when we, they brought him over, or had he had like some time off? Was there like a gap in play? Um, let's see. What a is gap, the a gap year, if you will? What yeah. is the South Africa League schedule? I'm pretty sure that they play like a European schedule. So I think that yeah. So he's in the middle of his season when he came over. Oh, okay, um, okay. So maybe it's just also like some rest then too. Yeah, I'm sure. Like it's a long season, right? Yeah. Yeah, they're 20 still, games into their season now, so. I'm still going with the Carnell read my friend's text. <laughs> but if you guys are, you know, confident. Yeah, well, uh, if, see, if, if I could not... just nip that in the bud and say <laughs> that this podcast is, you know, pro Jabula Blum, so maybe not you there in Florida, but this, the Missouri <laughs> hey, aspect. Hey, of... <laughs> I was arguing against it. I was on Blum's side. I'll bring a I, sign. And don't you throw me in with the bust. interlopers? <laughs> Blom or bus, that's right. Can we call him the Blom and Onion? You're welcome. Oh, man. no. We can keep that all. We, we can keep sure. that. That's for free. If he was Australian, I think maybe. Yeah. Well, mm-hmm. But you know, so, but the South African accent does get mistaken for Australian. It's right. It's like, it's not to. English, so he's obviously Australian. Yeah, that's yeah. New Zealand, too. New Zealand and South Africa. Oh, that's right. Australian. <laughs> fourth, they're fourth in the tier. So another thing I noticed in this game is uh, Jacques Klaus was getting the ball in those dangerous areas that we talked about, but with kind of the setup and Portland was doing a good job making sure that he couldn't like cut in centrally. Um, for the first goal comes at stoppage time. So Portland are up one nothing heading into the final minutes of the first half. There's a stoppage in play and something I noticed that I pointed out in my articles. Indiana Vasilev is like aggressively pointing to the other side of the field because there's like space wide open over there. <laughs> and so they take the free kick, they work it back to Berkey and to Tim Parker, who like sends it over to that space. And that's where they are able to get forward. Uh, Nerwinski is played down the line. He plays it through all moves, continuing his run and then sends the ball in. Essentially, uh, a miss hit from Klaus that I would like to put out there that would he meant to do it. Um, <laughs> yes, 40 chess assist. <laughs> but this yeah. was, uh, he was, he meant to make it look like he was taking a shot. It was not a shot. It deflects off him. Stroud is completely unmarked and puts it into the back of the net. So He meant to look like a completely uncoordinated human being. <laughs> it's like... That's one of those where he gets the assist, but I don't know if he should necessarily have gotten that assist. It's like hey, it was on purpose. We just agreed to this. <laughs> it was very clever. 
Very clever. Right. Klaus, Klaus doesn't make mistakes, so. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm just bringing the vibes <laughs> down. <laughs> so that's, that's how right. everything is a calculation. Yeah. So that's how the first half ended. The second half kind of started very, very 50 50. There were a whole lot of chances um, until kind of the back half of the second half. So Portland's best chance of the second came in the 69th minute. Juan Mosquera successfully dribbled past two city defenders and like forced the entire defense to collapse around him. He finds, uh, I think he finds Williamson, he puts it on, and then it's initially blocked by Hebert. And then that's where Roman Berkey makes his big save with his knee, as Steven so brilliantly pointed out uh, on the day. And from there, like City would basically march right down the opposing side of the pitch. Um, Edward Lewin would win a pretty dangerous free kick as he sets up, he sends it in, it bounces around a little bit in the box and finds Kyle Hebert, who rises up, spikes into the ground and uh, into yep. the net before Portland could get to it and clear it. So two to one, and that's how that game ends. Why uh, didn't we score more goals, Justin? Well, quick, res- quick response. I think that, uh, they were very much game plan for what they thought Portland was going to do. That's the other thing with this game too, is very much like a different tempo from what you saw in the first two games. And like, I think some of the, not necessarily like lack of chances, but I think they weren't necessarily pressing as hard and as high as they were in previous games until like later in the second half. So it was interesting to see those like tactical wrinkles develop. Love a good wrinkle. Yeah. We love a good wrinkle. What were your, what were your takeaways? My takeaways are, um, I think this team is actually borderline good. Like, I still worry about the, I know that seems ridiculous to say, but like, I still, (laughs) shush, I still worry about like the overall talent factor. Yeah. But the fact, you know, the fact that they've been able to throw three different looks out there, they've come back three times admittedly like we said we'd prefer they not have to always come back mm. i mean i guess i suppose they got the first goal in in the uh austin game but but they um, did go down to one then so they were they, they did, did come down, back. Yes. Yes. So, um i just feel like it, there's the system's working there's really well coached um and i'm very highly encouraged by what i've seen so far i think this is not a team that is ever going to be an easy opponent or, you know, mm. that we're, we're going to just smash through the FC Cincinnati threshold. <laughs> um, and it's really exciting to have a team that uh, looks this good. We're uh, clear of the Cincinnati line. As oh, it will we're well clear at the moment. Be we, should known. Have, <laughs> we should create a graphic that tracks it throughout the season. Yeah, I want to see us bust through that. That's right. We'll see an explosion. I want to double mm-hmm. that, triple that. Six um, twenty-two and six, and they set a league record for most goals given up with seventy-five in their inaugural season. Six twenty-two and six. Ay, ay, ay. That's not great. It's not great. So we're halfway we're already so that halfway to the number of wins. Oh man, game. I spot us. I spot us like ten wins. <laughs> Are they right. easy? An and easy got ten. A, and we've got a shorter season thanks to big champions. So. so yeah. So there you go. Thanks, Con- yeah. Yeah, that's right. I in this game. Um, I thought Stroud was very noticeable. Like I thought he was, he was very greasy this game. Um, got the, got the Look, yellow. You're trying a new gel. Okay. Don't. Yeah. He'd, he'd be, your, he'd be like your, your like third line, like mucking dude. in like the NHL who everyone just loves. You're like, yeah, this guy he's oh, getting yeah. in there. He's getting Ken, greasy. Ken Hitchcock would love him. Oh yeah. He'd so love himself. I really Stroud. like that our analogies for this soccer podcast yeah. are made to a much less popular. Show. Yeah. Look, <laughs> this look guy, I can't, I can't make like, it to an even closer one. This there's a trope like, of everyone having football. to compare things to like football and basketball and these like, uh, most, like, much larger fan base for us and we're just over here narrowing our fan base more and more this, with each episode this guy, <laughs> this guy is like your classic fourth holding defender in kabaddi you know what yeah. i'm saying look Everybody he's like <laughs> he's like um uh kendrick perkins right i don't know uh-huh. about the nba but that's pretty close right that's pretty much the um same. But yeah, I mean, I think I've noticed him every game, but I think this one in particular, like I just think he was all around the ball mm-hmm. uh, making plays. A few a few good tackles, a few advised tackles. 
Um, I like that they started, uh, who's our 17 year old Perez? Yes. Is that his name? Okay. Yeah. Um, I liked what I saw to him. I mean, he's obviously young and growing and learning and everything, but he seemed he fairly looked, aggressive in the midfield. He looked psychotic. At yeah, he, looked, he, he, he was pretty aggressive to put it lightly, but uh, I didn't, I didn't mind it. Uh, it, it was entertaining at least. Um, yeah, the commentators like, called it out at one point because they're like, wow, this Perez kid is aggressive. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> wow, I better say I like it because if I don't, that's something else. That, um, obviously, Leuven's very good. Very good player. Excellent player. I want to see more, from, like, just want to see more of him. I guess I should say I want to see more from him. He's done He's done everything great. Um, and yeah, I guess I've been, I've been pleasantly surprised with, like, the back end overall. Like, they're not fantastic, but they're getting the job done thus far. I just wonder, again, if, like, that bottom falls out and I'm like, Jesus Christ. Timmy Parks, baby. Yeah, you know what? I like, he's, he's, um, Let's say he's a Barrett Jackman type. All right, let's get even more in the weeds. Uh, I don't, who is it? Somebody pointed out that he looked like um, Mike Babcock. And I was like, oh, that's it. That's exactly what I've been thinking. And I just didn't know it. When I looked at him, I'm like, I've seen you before. Where have I seen you before? Where have I seen this face before? Oh, benching Mitch Marner. That's where I've seen it. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm, I've just I been pleasantly Parker surprised. I think also bench Mitch. Mitch Marner too. Oh, probably. Well. Probably bench him with his Parker foot to his look face. Like, man, that resemblance is uncanny. I don't like I it. I don't like that. <laughs> for a DNA test, I think. <laughs> I think it's uh, Mari, Mori, whatever is that. Um, yeah, I mean, I I feel like, I don't know, transition into like sort of like a preview, but like I feel like they should beat San Jose. I don't think San Jose is a quality team? Are they? The Am I S- wrong? Do you mean the SJ Quakes? Oh, sorry. Yes, the SJ Quakes. The SJQ. The Q, yeah. SJQ. I think, like, I think it'll be interesting because the Quakes are in a similar position that we are. Where It's like, okay, this team might be good. They're exciting to watch, but they haven't necessarily beaten anyone where you can point to and be like, okay, that's a that's a good team. Like, hmm. I can point to Austin and or Portland and say that's a good team. I mean, it might not be can fair, you? but I can do it. <laughs> I would, I need to see what happens when we play Seattle before I make like sweeping judgments about this team. Unless they lose every game until that point, then I will. Dear listener, yeah. don't be not afraid. I will happily make sweeping judgments until then. It's why I can't. It's why I can't gamble because I like I need more certainty. <laughs> <laughs> so well, that true. That's not what gambling is about. That's true. You need to be certain this money will be mine. Right, and then I think that's against just the ethos of gambling, but I such is that. life. You could be two dollars, Steve. You could be against really against the ethos and be a uh, sponsored by a gambling website, and then openly on a podcast be like i only bet two dollars though and hear the guy <laughs> scream internally as he's promoting his business well i did write betting articles for the world cup and like oh, if, when i tracked it i'm like okay if i bet a hundred dollars on each of these picks i would have been like i think it was 2500 up but like i would never in a million years be able to put that much money down on a sports game i just can't it's just too random i know some people <laughs> that do like four or five times that and it upsets me yeah speaking about it upsets me guys i am confident now that these border pieces do not exist steven i'm so sorry I I i don't know what to do with my life this is a problem this is upsetting did this come from uh your old residence did you lose them in the move? No, that I opened it fresh. I came from Amazon. I bought a puzzle for myself. Oh, that's the problem. To do alone in my apartment. So be sad <laughs> for me. Be sad for me. Look Wait. upon me and despair, all you listeners. <laughs> when you finish, are you going to glue it together? Uh, maybe. Put I'm it on the wall. Ma- I'm going to mount next, it on the wall. Yeah, the next that's art right. piece. <laughs> that's right. I, I did that puzzle. I don't know if you know that. He wouldn't believe it thousand pieces of queer blue sky and it only take took me six months steve it's really gonna pull that room together though that's what you have to think about thank you everything pulls <laughs> the room together that's what i've always told myself i'm gonna find one of these these pieces before the end of this podcast and it's gonna be 
Oh, oh I think we're done. Well, so, you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, I hate you, Brad. You lose. Listeners, just... uh, be on the lookout. This will be a recurring plot point. As the, This is our B plot for <laughs> yeah, the episode. Right. <laughs> <laughs> what a plot. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> Justin, you are the much, much more accomplished and distinguished uh, source for this team. What are your takeaways after three games? Make some sweeping generalizations, if you will. Yeah, That's I right. think they're... Jump good. to some conclusions. I do think that they are good. I, like, when you look at the advanced stats, like, everything kind of backs up, like, what you see on the field. So that's encouraging. Like, again, it's quality of opponent in a way that you get, like, a Lawson team that hadn't quite figured it out yet, a Charlotte team that's very bad, uh, and then Portland that also hasn't figured it out yet. But they force teams into making mistakes. And I think, like, the other thing is, I think a lot of MLS teams, like, don't take preseason seriously. Like, it seems like there's a real fitness issue that, like, this team worked hard in preseason. They, like, drill and drill to run this, like, high-octane offense. And I think it just, like, really catches teams off guard, even though they know it's coming. So It doesn't like, matter when you bank the points, I've always right. been told, mm-hmm. yes. you know? So that's always encouraging. And yeah, I mean, I think the the advanced stats do back up uh, us overall. Our, our expected goals are strong, you know. Um, I know you threw some other cool stats out there talking about like um, Robin Berkey adding more verticality than almost any player in the league yes. and things like that. So like some fun stats about that. So Berkey is third in the league in terms of yards gained through passes. So he sits behind two other goalkeepers, obviously, but it just speaks to like why that was the guy that they like made their destination goalkeeper. And like, you can point to some of the saves that he maybe should have made because he like, hey, Roman at, Burkney, baby, he's right. back. And like, the other thing is he's not facing a ton of shots. So anytime you don't face a ton of shots, it's like in those high danger goal scoring chances, like you're going to let those in sometimes. But Mm -hmm. even if he's not making those saves, he's still helping you out by getting the ball down the field and advancing you. And like some of those goals they've had in the first couple of games have come from Berkey just like booting the ball downfield and winning the second ball. Yeah, a real uh, Allison, if you will, probably Mm -hmm. as good as Allison, I would say. And that sweep and that sweeper keeper role. Ian, can you uh, please tell us what a sweeper keeper is? Uh-oh. Oh, no. <laughs> I see uh, you typing. <laughs> that wasn't oh, it doesn't, doesn't pick that up. And the, the audio doesn't pick up. Like, keyboard. <laughs> a sweeper keeper? Uh, I don't know. They sweep the ball away. They're like, they're yeah. like, a, they're like an <laughs> okay. 11th the player i mean they're already an 11th yeah. player That's but it's like they're like more active are. than just mm-hmm. the goalkeeper but if you think of it like back in the day you used to have like one of your defenders you would call the sweeper that would kind of like sit back behind the other defenseman he was the guy that and like, it, would and it was always Kenny the Omega. <laughs> <laughs> yeah or shabu leblanc who was also the sweeper but we can talk about that later right. and then some Johan Cruyff esque person was like told me the word. Sorry. That's you. Uh, <laughs> you just you just paused on some for a minute and I had to get it, you know. Was basically like, hey, what if we have our keepers do this thing that we're putting one of our defenders back here for and clogging up all the space? And someone's like, Yeah, that works really well. And thus the sweeper keeper was born. I think that's exactly how it happened. I think that's it. And then Jesus came down and it was all happy. And everyone clapped. That's right. I love a good everyone clap story. <laughs> so that's uh that's uh that's uh that's the game that we played. Mm-hmm. That's the um exciting tale of how St. Louis City Soccer City Soccer SC playing in Western downtown St. Louis downtown West. have risen to I mean, the Western, Western <laughs> downtown St. Louis. I mean, it's close to Western downtown Western St. Louis. Western downtown <laughs> St. Louis. It's east of the county line, but it's huh? west of much of the rest of downtown. No one would be there and think they were in downtown. Right, that's, that's so clearly downtown West. Like, don't even try. No, it's not. This is <laughs> gas. <laughs> I you're know gaslighting, gaslighting me. me. <laughs> you are gaslighting me if you believe that downtown west is a real thing. This is yeah, not I've true. Been there. This is never listen. I've been to Narnia, but that doesn't mean it's real. 
It means I had a dream one uh. time. Listen, we're gonna from this podcast will break apart over this. <laughs> oh, God, I've never hated anything more. He's never gonna come. He's never gonna come to the stadium. That's right. Not until you acknowledge that it's not in friggin' downtown. Uh, Stephen, can I can I pick your mute up a bit for a second? Please. Um but- can we talk about this rumor that's been floating around that the rumors are good? The Spanish deal has talked with the Berto for me now, who is out of contract this summer. Steve 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 rumor. He Steve, what are your thoughts? First of all, the album, <laughs> how does that make you feel on a spiritual rumors, level? <laughs> the album rumors by Fleetwood Mac, an all time classic, just a shout out to that. <laughs> of course. Of course. you've never heard of rumors <laughs> with Fleetwood Mac. That little indie album called Rumors. Let's, that's uh, right. Let's I, Did you know they were all dating each other at the time? <laughs> yeah, and it's all right. about their failed relationship. <laughs> I could go deep on that, but <laughs> let's talk about Bobby Chicklets, okay? Uh, I am uh, obviously over the moon. It would be so happy for me if he came here. I don't think it's actually going to happen, but why not? Bobby Chickwitz, baby. Yeah, I mean, it comes down to like, as a 31 year old who is still like a star in international soccer, even if he's Bobby kind Chalmers, of moved yes. past his Liverpool days, like, does he want to give up Champions League football? And Remember, though, that this is a player that Jurgen Klopp expected to re-sign as a, as a Liverpool player until like two weeks ago. So I did not. Uh, I wasn't. So, Stephen, how did that break down? You're the you're the Liverpool guy. Like, what was the what was the process there? I I mean, I th- you know, I think they fully intended to re-sign him. I think Bobby Chompers probably saw the writing on the wall a little bit and realized that the. Liverpool had at least five forwards who were like younger the, and better and healthier. The math doesn't really work out here. <laughs> there wasn't probably going to be a lot of opportunity for him to be a major impact player. And um, I think he decided that he had better take his journey and take his talents to somewhere else. And maybe that place will be Western downtown St. Louis, you know? Either here or Milan. I mean, it's a coin toss, really. Justin, let me ask you a question. (laughs) Gun to your head. If you have to deny the existence of downtown West, which is just a statement of fact, uh, in order for Roberto Firmino to come to St. Louis City SD, would you do it? I'm not going to ruin my integrity by lying, so no, I can't. (laughs) That's what it takes. I can't. I cannot with you two. I cannot even (laughs) with you two. It's not a place. It doesn't exist. It doesn't exist, okay? See, I don't want to tell you. You can you can yell all <laughs> all podcast long. <laughs> I will. I can and I will. What do you Google make Earth, of the Bobby? They triangulated it. Right. What what do you make of the Bobby Chompers rumors, Justin? I think it's interesting. Like, obviously it's a good fit, you know, with kind of what he's been asked to do at Liverpool versus the kind of offense they run. Like, there are some cons there in that he's a little bit older, and that's, like, against kind of the, what, like, the the profile of player that Letts has been, like, going after. But Well, like, to be given... fair, he is in the profile of player in that he was at Offenheim. At right, once. and that so, at one point in time, he that is, was. That <laughs> seems to be the major profile of Letts' players. Yeah. But go but, on. Who Letts signed at Hoffenheim also. So like uh-huh. there's there's that connection. There's Roger Whitman, who is Firmino's agent, is also Klaus's agent. So like there's some major mm-hmm. three lines here. And imagine like, imagine being a agent for someone that immensely talented and internationally accomplished and also Roberta Firmino. I, do. Yeah, I mean incredible. <laughs> Unbelievable to think I'm of. just <laughs> like this guy, the clients that he has. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, like, there's obvious, like, I think you can triangulate that, like, at the very least, this is, like, the skeptic in me is like, okay, Roger Whitman, his agent, knows that there's this connection here. So, like, let's put out an MLS rumor because it's going to get for me no more money in Europe, possibly. But, like, I sure. think the likelihood of it is probably like 30% that it happens. But if he is going to come to MLS, like St. Louis seems like a good destination for him. It's a perfect destination. Ian, your thoughts and how much do you wish it was Hyun Min Song? Ah, oh, I mean, can you I, imagine that content? God, I wish deeply. <laughs> I wish deeply for the man in the mask. 
yesterday or today in a son jersey who was like decked out like in the full kit head to toe nice and i, I love like, when that he... probably cost your father 300 dollars. <laughs> and like I love if, when he scores on the if show son the did see thing. him yeah and like i like that son like goes and like hugs kids after stuff like that oh yeah uh-huh. makes my heart cry he does a little picture frame thing yeah. you know gotta frame it up <laughs> Just a wholesome guy. It makes fun of fucking Var like he should. He's going to be a VAR, kiss my ass, bitch. Um, that's a classic Son expression. I know. He loves, that's, his, that's his sketch line, kiss my ass, bitch. Uh, he loves it. He loves the English language. God, that'd be cool, though. Uh, no, he's not. You know, it's not, it'd be cool if they had Firmino over. Um, I mean, that'd be like a real player. I wonder what that's like. Is I, that like if you get like a real player in the MLS, you just we, like start stomping <laughs> on people? If we get him and don't start singing the Bobby Firmino song from Liverpool, just straight up steal it, I will be incensed. I will be so enraged. Right. He's right like a league. Give him the ball McDavid's. and he'll score every time. <laughs> a league of Conor yeah. McDavid. It's yeah, like it's that could possibly come over and affect your league, but then they could also like leave and go back to the league of Conor McDavid. Yeah, I think like the closest that this has ever been. It's like Robbie Keane was thirty-one when he came over uh, for to join the Galaxy, and like obviously lit the league on fire. Like that's kind of the closest I can draw from it because like Insigne to Toronto that hasn't worked out, but also like Insigne is injury prone and maybe a damaged player at this point and like for me knows not that right like he's still no contributing he's, player he's had on a, some injuries but i wouldn't call him injury prone i think yeah. he's just been a situation where he's been but there's a lot a of little, competition a little crowded out by yeah. the competition but not in a sense that he couldn't get back and be a a major factor if he wanted to be and i have no i have no question that he would be a dominant player in mls if he came over at this point yeah i'm a little bit sad for nicholas giochini because that like kind of if that were to happen like that kind of forces him into a different position probably but uh like you got to do that for, for me now. <laughs> for me now. and i'll tell you what giochini has looked great mm-hmm. so you know shout out to him way to play Way to be a killer. Way to not help me find any friggin' border pieces. Ah, oh, Steven. Piece of crap. But, um, you Building know. Up I, that tension. That's right. I had to bring it back. I had to bring the story back. <laughs> you know how you, sometimes you have to hit the story notes? Just like a little. Like, you, know, you, you forget see, about the B plot. You almost, yeah, you almost see it like in the background. <laughs> like it's barely happening, but people need to know about it. Um, but yeah, I mean, obviously, Firmino would be uh, a complete game changer for this team. And I think, as I pointed out at the either on Twitter or something, I think the other thing that suggests is like, even if it's not Firmino, maybe they're looking to make that bigger splash hmm. uh, in the summer, which we talked about as a possibility uh, a while ago and definitely would make logical sense, especially if they do continue to surprise and have kind of an early, early run of form that keeps them up in, you know, up in a playoff spot and keeps them a contender yeah. at I the very least that. they're willing to commit shakiri money that's right player. god power cube <laughs> power cube power cube and firmino reunited in the same lot in the same league one Just state away from each other five hours down one st- 55 one state that is as big <laughs> as all of great britain away from each other <laughs> Isn't that crazy to think about? My dad, so my dad always talks about that. Um, They hosted these, like, a group of firefighters from Germany, and they flew in through Chicago and, like, drove from Chicago to St. Louis. You gotta love a good German. They were, like, so flabbergasted by, like, the five hours of farmland they drove through to get to St. Louis. Like, yep, (laughs) welcome welcome to the Midwest. (laughs) U.S. of A. That's right. I had to rescue some Germans from TPC Sawgrass the other day. It was quite funny. I got a call. So the the Players Championship is in Jacksonville every year. It's the fifth major. If anybody's counting, there are actually four majors, so it's an irrelevant title, but it is the (laughs) fifth major. This one, it's the thumb. That's the extra finger you've got. These are the four majors that matter, but you have a thumb. You have a thumb that's not finding any border pieces, by the way, and you have call it the fifth major. So anyway, they gave me a call 530 on a Friday after the skies opened up and they asked me to drive through traffic and pick them up and take them back through even more traffic to their house so they could change. 
And as I just made sure to remind them that as often happens when a European found themselves in distress, they had to call <laughs> call an American for salvation. Um, but at least at least the Germans called us this time and not mm. someone who was fighting the Germans. So, you know, I'll take it. I'll take well, it. It changes, a, but it stays the same. That's right. That's that's exactly right. <laughs> and the dogs are going crazy in the background. Uh, Justin, tell us about the San Jose quakes. Would you please tell us about John Tenta and the San Jose earthquake? I'll, I'll tell you about. I'll tell you about quake. Uh, like I said earlier, San Jose is a team that, like, under new manager they have been like very exciting to watch so it's like a team that definitely needs more on paper like they only were able to score one against colorado last week and colorado is just like a was that one scored by chris wondolowski no chris wondolowski uh retired now Stephen. no they're not um that one goal was scored by christian espinoza though who is their kind of maestro um that's a player to watch out for if you're wondering you know who on this earthquakes team is dangerous and third front three for sure. So they have Kate Cowell on the left wing, Jeremy Abobasi at striker and, and uh, Espinoza, Christian Espinoza at right wing. So Kate that Cowell's front three- American, right? Kate Cowell is a young American who, if you remember from the January USMNT window, looked great, but he's a streaky player. And I was on Tectonic yesterday and they were talking about that. And he's kind of in a bit of a dry spell right now, but still a young player. Um, he just needs to find that consistency, but they are a strong front three team midfield not so much and their defense can be shaky at times but like this is going to be luchi gonzalez's fourth game of charge and they've looked much more free-flowing as opposed to the almeida years before this so i they're going to be a tough out like that's a tough team to play now coming to st louis like the travel and everything that we always talk about like i feel good about this team's chances but like they can't be looking past san jose are you willing to guarantee a win over the i'm not jose? you know me i'm not willing i can't are guarantee you willing... i can't guarantee that <laughs> are you, you willing at guarantee? least are you willing at least to deny the existence of downtown west no absolutely oh, never, not. i never. demand I that you deny it Oh my I, God, this is so. You're upsetting. asking me to put my integrity on the line, Steve. Your integrity. <laughs> Why are you questioning this character? They're going to take my credentials. Integrity is a sack of crap if you believe downtown okay. West exists. That's true. Take we'll my, take his credentials. Take my credentials. Yeah. That's where he goes yeah. to work. <laughs> no, he goes to Western Downtown San Luis. You'd be lost. You'd be lost. <laughs> put that in the GPS, Steven. Try it. It won't. It'll put me out like King's Western Cross Downtown. Or <laughs> yeah, it'll be like a wild one. <laughs> be driving in the lake of the ozarks um, <laughs> that's, right. that's right if they win four in a row then is that the record though? that's the record baby. that is the oh, the endless record to, to take to it at sounders you gotta and beat they, seattle yeah much like bitch. much like the superpowers we will be taking out earthquake that's right more 90s wwe references <laughs> you remember when Wow, that was a sound. That just... <laughs> I'm sorry, I let my bowels loose. <laughs> sorry, I was pouring myself tea and I didn't realize how close it was to the back. So. <laughs> I'm glad I already We're, we're falling apart. Right. We're falling apart here, folks. I was over it right there. <laughs> oh, yes. I hope you, dear listener, don't have to use the bathroom. <laughs> That's right. Probably don't have that was your anymore. reminder. No, you don't have Mid-podcast to Mid-podcast reminder way. to, you know, make sure you're not holding it in. Yeah. Holding it in is yeah. bad for you. We've learned this, so make sure you're well hydrated. Make sure you gave yourself ample bathroom breaks through the day okay (laughs) (laughs) and if uh and if chris uh chris trigger is to be believed from parks and recreation eats eat lots of radishes (laughs) eat to a healthy urethra so you know i just pick up facts from tv shows and assume that they're true that's right and who am i who am i to doubt chris trigger that's right uh yeah i mean i'm interested to see the san jose game i'm really interested to see how turnt the crowd is after you know with it not being the home opener i mean i still expect it to be mm-hmm. pretty solid but um i'm interested to see what that that second day second crowd second game vibe is like um i'm, I'm looking forward to it obviously i'm looking forward to it not being at 10 30 at night also <laughs> that's going to be a big win for steven so lots of I- wins coming down the pike while we're on that topic, can we ban West Coast games? Like, can that just not yeah. be a thing? 
I'm fine with that. Yeah, nine thirty is rough. At least make it. <laughs> at least make it nine. Excuse you. Listen, I'm here. I can hear you. I yeah, but you're by the ocean or whatever, in like the largest city by like land area. Or whatever. Right, so right, right. You got a lot going for there's it. There's a lot. There's a lot of Jacksonville. <laughs> they got right. the fifth PGA major down there. I mean. I think did, of all the things Jack's oh, last offer. <laughs> I did I did drive to spring training and drive home and then walk on the beach in one day this weekend. Mm. So that was pretty cool. That is nice. So he's trying to cheer himself up by also like slapping us in the face. Yeah. Well, yeah. you know. Till until you <laughs> deny the existence of downtown West, uh, you are no friends of mine. So downtown I slap, West. I will Sorry. slap you wherever I damn well please. <laughs> Can we at least agree that going up in the arch is a waste of time? Yeah. Did you see um, the Battle Hawks posted a picture the day before the game where all the offensive linemen went up in one of those things? Oh and my I, God. I, God. I was oh afraid God. for their oh lives. No. I, would have a, I, would have a, break. I would have a panic attack looking at that photo. It's like, don't you guys don't want to do that. Like, no one actually goes up in the arch. <laughs> I haven't been up in the arch since I was like in fifth grade. You don't have to do it. Man, I wish. Oh, you got to go back up. You got to go back up, Justin, because then you have the revelation that I had that it moves. I mean, people tell you it moves as a kid. You're just up there walking around like doop to doop to doop. <laughs> At least I was. And yeah. then people were like, hey, it sways up there. And like, it's supposed to sway. And I was like, okay, whatever. And then I went back up as an adult and I was like, holy shit, it sways. <laughs> And it's it's ruined for me. It's ruined for me. Now. <laughs> you can't do um, that. <laughs> I wish I could sit next to where they let people into the little eggs uh all day Just i wish i could sit there all day because the their faces are fan fucking fantastic but it opens up they're like oh well it's probably one of those things where it's like, yeah, it's like small it on the outside but pretty, it goes deep but it's like it's bigger on the inside, inside. They're like, oh, no, it got smaller right it doesn't it actually looks bigger on the outside than it is in there I, that was one of my favorite moments was going into the arch elevator with a college friend and a couple from Wisconsin that told us they're from Wisconsin while they were in there because they were very nervous and watching all three of their faces just like turn to horror <laughs> as we were going off like, yeah, you hear all those noises that are supposed to happen. <laughs> or are they? This you like, see their steps on the outside? But that's Original elevator from like 1950 when people were like five foot tall. Oh my God. Yeah, I can't believe, I get that they, they can't make the arch any like wider, although they probably could. Um, and yet, like they have, that's the one thing they haven't improved. That's the one thing in there that's still from the 60s. It's like, yep, got the same old tram system, baby. I'm convinced they kept it for old times sake, so, you know. I kind of wish they kept the arch old on the bottom because I enjoyed going into like a time capsule. It was like a fun <laughs> little like this is when it was built. And this is what it looked like, and it still looks like that to this very day. See all that rust? See, the, <laughs> see all the rust see all the really shitty mannequins down here the yeah. gateway arch i believe is america's smallest national park all right i have uh, i found the photo and i posted it in the google doc for girls enjoyment they uh yeah, they look very uncomfortable these oh large God, men to... <laughs> guys i swear to god there are no edge pieces <laughs> oh my god look how small it is look how crammed they are mm-hmm. 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 I'm uncomfortable. They look like astronauts. <laughs> I know, yeah. <laughs> That's true. They're coming back, baby. Yeah, they should shove, we should shove some uh some of those uh, city players in there. We probably fit more. Yeah, of them. well you can fit more of them except for like Klaus and Ludwin would oh, be their yeah. own. Um and then yeah. everyone else can fit. Well Klaus can scale it, you know. Yeah. Klaus can just scale the Klaus outside. is as tall as the arch. So right. like, many people don't know that. <laughs> That's right. You don't know that just because of the camera, the camera the angle. Camera is, has 10 feet. You know, right. It's <laughs> Guys, I'm sad to say there are no there. Oh, Steven. No. Oh. I'm sorry. I think you lost them. I don't I've think they are there. Twice. I've been back and forth two times. I've done I a bet whole if you turn twice. that I bet if you turn that room of yours upside down, if you just tore it apart, you'd mm-hmm. find Listen, them. I'm gonna tear downtown west apart. First first is oh, oh, oh. but he said he'd tear it, he'd tear it apart. Right. It has to exist. Implying that it exists in the first place. Oh, a logical fallacy. (laughs) A logical trap. You're you're a logical fallacy. Stephen, like, 
You're I know that you're just taking out your frustrations on us because of how Liverpool bowed out of the Champions League. It's no, okay, you can admit we're it. not doing that. <laughs> we don't need to talk about that tonight. I have, I have emotions, okay? <laughs> and I don't need to hear your crap. After Bournemouth and now this, I've given up on life. Liverpool. I didn't expect, I didn't expect them to win tonight. I never going to Madrid, down 5-1. I, you stop talking. You stop talking. <laughs> I just thought that they talk now that they would at least beat Bournemouth and they didn't because they're a, a shower of bastards as I once, once heard a Liverpool uh, <laughs> a scouser refer to them as. On, on Their the insults are podcast. so good. I just like, I can't. Absolute, <laughs> he, he referred to them as an absolute shower of bastards and wow, I've never forgotten good. it. Uh, and that's what they're playing like lately and I hate it and I've given up on life and I don't want to live anymore and thank you and good night. That's my thoughts on the Champions League. Is that what you wanted to hear, Justin? Did you want to hear my suffering? No, I mean, that, that puts things into perspective for sure. <laughs> much like <laughs> much like uh, Pep Guardiola has given up on life because Julia Roberts nagged him. I <laughs> yes. too have given up on life. I like how Pep, he's so like, I don't know. He just downplays everything. So you picture a guy who is big at target transfer, spent like a billion dollars on early law and scores five goals in a game. And then you're just going on about how Julia Roberts went to visit Manchester United instead of Manchester city over the weekend. <laughs> mm-hmm. Just on his mind. He's, I, he's down bad. I think we can he's all down agree. Bad. I think Pep is down bad and that's fine. You know, if it, it is what it is. I'm happy to see Pep suffering because he's caused me plenty of suffering over the year. Much like this puzzle has caused me suffering, I need to go reevaluate the border pieces I have and see if I'm trying to, you know, over Maybe I'm maybe I'm the problem here. Maybe it's me. Hi, I'm the problem. We don't have we don't have the royalties. Okay, stop that. Stop that. Stop that. Stop that. <laughs> Taylor, please. <laughs> <laughs> please, be gentle, God. be merciful, please. Um, what? Okay. Okay. I'm going to learn something. All right. Here we I go. know what I, I'm, I've majored in math. I know what aggregate means. Mm-hmm. What is this the aggregate of? The two games they play, they play two legs of the sub tournament, home and away, and the total score defines who wins. When did they play the first leg? A week or two ago. Oh. And I'm not paying attention to that part because I was like, wait, yeah, the first leg like on February 21st, uh, Liverpool lost to Real Madrid five to two. Justin, he's okay. just reiterating, I just need to know. So that, that's learn. when the first leg took place, Ian. Was February what happened during that first leg, Justin? Uh, Real Madrid beat Liverpool <laughs> at Anfield five to two, is what happened. Oh, at Anfield, you want to yeah. rub that in a little deeper? Well, I just, I just want to make sure everyone has the context. This makes a lot of sense then <laughs> that this is the most Tottenham thing to ever Tottenham is to fucking win an aggregate of two games, one nothing. <laughs> wow. It is, it is pretty good, actually. Freaking. Which one, <laughs> which one of you two absolute jabronis put a downtown West Wikipedia article up? Not just, me. Just Not mess that. up to it. Just admit That's, it. That's Jeff's doing. Do you think, Ian, Tottenham losing one nothing on aggregate over two games, do you think Conte is, like, happy about that? He's okay with it? He's like, you know, we lost, but we only allowed one goal. So. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's like a net victory all the way around. He's like, we don't want to show them up too bad. Like, a, a, big, <laughs> a big gap between you is, like, that's not good either. You're not playing – if you score a lot of goals, then you're playing a lot of offense, and that's not defense. That's Despite not what people say, that's not defense, and he only likes defense. By defense, I mean collapsing. <laughs> it's absolutely collapsing. <laughs> Just capitulating from the start. Wait, so who do they play? Who do they play now? So we don't know. So there will be a draw. Oh. Um, that Man. will the winners of this round. Um, obviously, Man, Europe's crazy. Yeah, Benfica, Benfica goes all the way, baby. I like. Uh, there's going to be some juicy matchups because obviously. Bayern knocked PSG out, which we're all happy about, but Manchester City has looked very dominant. Real Madrid has looked very good. Napoli has looked very good. It's uh, it's going to be exciting, these final couple of games. 
Oh, dang. I'm in. I'm but PSG getting knocked out is also very hilarious, and I enjoyed that happening. <laughs> when is when is uh, Mbappe ever going to leave? Is he ever going to leave? No. Like, maybe this summer. Real Madrid are after him hard, but yeah, I don't know. Oh. That's also been true the last eight summers, yeah. though. So. <laughs> and he's only going to Real Madrid. There's, like, nowhere else where he could go. It's either PSG oh. or Real Madrid. Really, Guys, really killed my vibe here. Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. Over yeah. Here I'm sorry to, to hurt to you. To the uh, Columbus crew. Oh, could you imagine? <laughs> you know, their old logo or their current logo is the or what logo is it that has the men on the front? Oh, that's their yeah, their the the OG logo, which is also yeah. the best logo. They should put him on there. <laughs> Mbappe, Two construction workers and Mbappe. I want yeah, I want him to be like at some mid MLS city. Uh, I think that'd be good for the sport in general. That's what I mean. There's a whole continent of McDavid. Yeah. If you just pull one over here. That yeah. just upsets the whole balance. Having to play like the Des Moines menace in some U.S. Open Cup game. That'd be good. I'd, I'd enjoy that. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Des Moines. Remember all those fancy <laughs> cities full of history you go to every freaking week and play? No, yeah, like you're from, you're, you're from Paris, right? Like you're like French names and stuff. So yeah. welcome to Des Moines. <laughs> Des Moines. You get it? It's like where you're from. I play here oh god yeah why does anyone come here i'm glad that uh the the folks at stl city the players enjoyed pie day i'm glad that half of them said that the food was surprisingly good here not in, like a nice way <laughs> like <laughs> not like oh it really was like, like kind, kind of, of insulting yeah it's like the food shouldn't be this good but it is like thanks. i thought it was mcdonald's everywhere <laughs> but i guess they also got burger king so <laughs> good for you someone like ravioli that's very nice yeah uh, yellow belly got a mention so got oh, yeah. shout out yellow, shout belly. Out yellow belly there you go someone's been around uh you know central west end guys i need to talk for a second oh, i've had no. some time right, to oh, no. <laughs> i've had some time to do some research i looked right. at some wikipedia articles oh okay maybe this is good i am prepared I like this to finally admit he's fine. oh god this is lying, shameful. this is hard for me uh Bye. he's lying, he's lying. <laughs> <laughs> no no i can do this i'm ready to admit that downtown west is an absolute conspiracy and never <laughs> motherfucker <laughs> you are completely full of crap if you believe that this is a real place in st louis that we've always talked about that it always existed just like dogtown or the hill or the freaking cream core like we grew up talking about <laughs> downtown west like that was a thing. i do i remember as a kid you are absolutely going and crap. hanging out at that highway you are lying to me down down west. you are lying <laughs> to me this was an invention by the liberal corporate media okay in the last the five media. years this is right that's right that's right this is diversity equity and inclusion it's got it written all over it and <laughs> i'm not here to stand for it okay this is a dei initiative and i'm not here for it so you can take that put it in your pipe and smoke it put it in your little arch little mm. little what do you call that like a cart like an elevator what would you call that whatever it mm. is you put it in that and you set it on fire and then everybody dies because yeah. that would be sad don't do that that's sad Jacksonville's really changed you. You've they you really yeah. driven down this path. I know. Far. I was I believed this when I was in St. Louis. Downtown West doesn't exist. <laughs> I didn't believe it there. I don't believe it here. You can't. Well, you'll never it, like, believe it there. You'll never knows. believe it there. Downtown West is the home to such such prestigious buildings, such as Union Station, <laughs> such as St. Louis City Hall, such You're as just naming the crap that's by the stadium, the Metropolitan Police Headquarters, <laughs> yeah, such as I get it. the Steeple Theater. The Enterprise. Could you say that any more painfully <laughs> next time? <laughs> People Theater. <laughs> and yeah, of course, scared. City Park. All I'm these scared. historic I'm venues scared. in downtown I'm West. Scared. None of these places are historic. And none the of park by West. Market Street where all the homeless people are. Exactly. Downtown West. Next time, next, next thing I know, you're gonna tell me that Idaho exists. You know, it's just like lie now after don't lie. Joke. Now don't joke. Oh my god. Oh God! And I can't find any border pieces. Which downtown West is about as real as these border pieces I'm missing. And I'm telling you, those exist. Both of them make me cry. Okay, so 
I hope you're happy. It's yeah, just erasing the five thousand one hundred fifteen people that live in downtown West. So you got you, They're gonna. You're Good. gonna have to answer to them. I, <laughs> I would get. I would. Yeah, answer all, to them now. I would collect all the Infinity Stones just oh, to no. erase downtown West. Wow. Oh, oh, yeah, oh, that's yikes. right. That's <laughs> too far. Thanos that's too levels. Far. Thanos <laughs> that's too levels far. Here. I just. I just committed genocide. That's too far. I have to come out on the podcast next week and apologize for Steve's genocide rankings. Where do those five thousand people live in downtown? West? There's a lot Where's of stress. Places to live. That's right. There's nowhere because there's no city because it's not doesn't exist. Ian, let me tell you, there are lofts. <laughs> uh, there are restaurants, taverns, and coffee <laughs> shops. So <laughs> <laughs> all of which people can live in. I am furious. But we're good. You know, we'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. We're working <laughs> out the kinks on this podcast. We'll figure it out. I'm, I'm sorry. Also, I'm sorry for committing hypothetical space genocide on downtown. Yeah, you really, you really went too far. There's there, a so lot of stress <laughs> in my life right now. These these border pieces do not I'm very exist. stressed. And I that's all I've got to say about the matter. Well, you know. We put you through a lot of pain here. Can't you admit, at least on this week of three three one four day, that downtown West was never part of the plan? Like no? part of the the original plan. I mean, never if you have downtown, like you have to have the, it's, like, it's downtown not part West. Of down, it's not part of the city. It does not exist. Just like admit a final it. Final plan. Just just like, like a final. Like a like a, like, like was a there final a problem? <laughs> was there, oh <laughs> no! Yeah. Oh boy. Oh my god. Hey, that's not what I said. You are the one that said it, and you don't put that on me. You don't put that even on me. There's there's Germans on our team. There's a true. Like, there's a couple. The beautiful area known as Downtown West, the area bounded by Jefferson Avenue on the west, Tucker Boulevard on the east, Cole Street on the north, and Chateau on the south. You're telling me that that entire region is just made up? I'm I telling you that that is completely fictitious, yes. <laughs> you might as well have said that it mm. was bordered by Narnia and Cotton Candy Land and freaking Hungry Hungry Hit by the Village oh. because that's about as much as that means to me. I've had good times in downtown West, and I'm not going to let you say haven't ever been to downtown <laughs> yeah, he's, West. He's closer than either of us did. Listen... I hate, but West fine. County I'm, can exist. So can downtown West. Exactly. I'm willing. I'm willing to bury this hatchet. No, okay, <laughs> for the moment until I think <laughs> about it again because I episode. am enraged. But Justin, are you are you prepared to admit that downtown West West doesn't exist? No, I'm not. No. All right. Ian, are you prepared to exist? <laughs> Ian, are you prepared to exist? <laughs> there he goes. There goes some shit again. Are you prepared to exist? Because you're about to not. Uh, Ian, are you prepared to name the soccer clubs with the best titles in each country in Europe? Here we go. Now we're talking. Oh, God. In each country? Some yeah. of those aren't even, or some of these aren't even One of European the countries. United States. This should be easy. This should Wait, be what so is this? Easy. Wait, what is this? You can do it. Give me England. Just do it. Just give scroll me up, Scroll up. What is this? The soccer clubs with the most titles in each country. Oh, okay. Uh, Manchester United. You did it. Fucking, fucking You're so bang good. On. Nice. Nice. Um, oh, let's see. What's another one that's there? Is this is a ticket. For you. This is I know. This is embarrassing. Me. Well, it's not Tottenham. Let's see. What are the other big ones? Chelsea. No. Oh, no. Right. <laughs> well, I was typing it. That's nice of them, though. Yeah. I didn't say Tottenham. <laughs> that was you. That was you. Um, we do have eight minutes, so we're going to need to pick up the pace. Thank you. Finally. Um, Ursula? Ridiculous guess. Incorrect. Spain? You got to give us Spain. These are easy. Real Madrid. Uh, okay. Barcelona. Okay. That's right. More like Barcelona. That's it. Yeah, exactly. Uh, <laughs> are there even are there even other cities in Spain? This is bullshit. Uh, well, what about a city you already mentioned? But with a different team. <laughs> I was just slowly filling these in for zone amusement. <laughs> uh, a city we already mentioned, uh, Milan, Madrid, oh. Madrid FC. <laughs> it may be. Athletic in nature. 
Oh, how many of these were? How many of these letters can I type? Go, let it go. Oh man. Uh, All right, you can do Germany. Come on, this is a a walk in the park. Sad. Wow. Okay, fine. Why am I? Why am I doing this? Why can't I think? Stephen having trouble spelling Uh, Bayern Munich. (laughs) uh, Dortmund. Very good. Oh no, middle one. This one might be hard. Yeah, this one also they don't also exist. Wow, I thought I had it, but I didn't. Couldn't be. Is it Fortunia? No, of course it's not Fortunia Dusseldorf. Is it my uh Munch and Gladback? Justin, try do to, you know the answer? Try try to spell it now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm oh, pretty sure I spelled that right. Is it is it uh, Leverkusen? Leverkusen. Justin, do you know the answer? Have you looked up the answer? Well, I thought it was Mission Gladback. So I then Borussia Mission Gladback. Can't spell it. Gladback. Nope. All right, we're moving on to Italy. These should be <laughs> Enter AC Milan, Roma. <laughs> Another one, Juventus. <laughs> another one. <laughs> Give me the other one. Naples. Somebody. Naples. What are some Napoli. other places? Uh, Benfica. <laughs> hey, Portugal. Hey, Portugal. Hey. <laughs> uh, what's that city with all the canals called? <laughs> you know the one, v- Vienna. <laughs> That's not the one. Venice. <laughs> Venice. Oh, you got it. You guys, I can see where you come from. Venezia has never won anything though. PSG not number one in France. What the fuck? Okay, well that's the only one I know. We can do we can do MLS. Yeah, go to MLS. Hit me up. Some Marseille. Marseille. Yep. Helping you out. (laughs) Lyon, perhaps. (laughs) Perhaps, perhaps. Ian, give me MLS. We've got three minutes. Now. Oh, MLS minutes left. Yeah. Uh, Galaxy. Wow, can't type it all. Okay. Um, if these European teams were in backyard soccer, this would be much easier. Yeah. <laughs> Seattle Sounders. Oh, I thought uh, they would. Damn. All right. Oh boy. I think. Think. Team Red that Bulls? is a disaster now, but in the early can't days be, was a dynasty. Can't be Chicago Fire. Can't be Red Bulls, could it? No. I'm What's sure the earthquake? Bad. I was trying to think back to the like, Metro Stars days. If they... Disaster now, early dynasty. The New England Revolution, perhaps? Mm-hmm. Nope. Let's try that. On the right seaboard, though. Oh, okay. Well, 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 well. That's most of the teams. <laughs> Team that oh, Ben Olsen I used to play for. I should know this from <laughs> Washington. <laughs> Washington, the DC United. I did it. Yes, I did it. Now, who's got two? Who only has two? Columbus? No, that's what the Sounders said. That's two. true. What the heck? Oh, my God. Wow, we're incredible. Okay, I think Dynamo. there's a bunch of teams with two because, like, the Dynamo have two, Earthquakes, I think, technically have two, depending on wow, I'm, who gets I'm those. Giving, I'm giving up entirely. <laughs> Why'd they spell turkey like this? That's probably how they spelled in turkey. Please, please tell me this isn't one of those things where now we're all supposed to spell it like that because I'll give up. Well, I think that is the <laughs> spelling, but... I'll, no, but like, I'll look you at know, people. But no, but do you remember, do you remember when they just were like, it's Czechia now and yeah. we were all supposed to be fine with it's that? It's like I I'm just supposed to say Czechia. I wasn't when... fine with it. I, like I, was was like a, I felt like a soft rollout because no one like was straight up like, yeah. this is it. The well, end. I think they are back to the Czech Republic now because people kept getting that uh... confused with Czechia, which of course you probably don't want to get oh you don't want that that. (laughs) (laughs) they are they've just gone back to the czech republic oh Oh, no you can't do that stand by your man that's what i said (laughs) it was fc nuremberg i was right Uh, i just can't spell i would never come up with saint etienne uh spartak i forgot that it's spartak and i typed kiev they should have given me that 
uh, the rest <laughs> of these. I mean, we should we we could have gotten Turkey. Our Rangers, I could have said that. Oh, Scotland's on completely there? missing Juventus too. I love I love how it's 55, 51, and four for <laughs> Scotland. <laughs> wow, this incredible. Is- Gentlemen. It's been a podcast. Do you guys have anything else you'd like to say to the people? Um, just, you know, I, I've been told that we don't do a good job plugging the podcast, Stephen. So uh, if you if you like us, you know, make sure you give us one of them their ratings, uh, wherever you're listening to this on. Follow us on Twitter as at STL underscore podcast if you're not following us already. And uh, that's that's my plugs. Ian, Ian, what'd you yeah. got to say? We are the Soccer Talk Lads podcast, the STL podcast, not to be confused with some other bullshit podcast called like Soccer Talk Podcast. Like we are not affiliated with the geriatric starter. <laughs> That's right. And unlike other St. Louis soccer podcasts, we are not afraid to stand in the breach and deny the- Oh no, no, <laughs> no, no. You are not alone out there. We hear your cries. Oh, no. We are the voice of the voiceless. That's why we we are the voice of the unrepresented. Yeah, like, like we will not. <laughs> <laughs> will not we will not be bullied down by carolyn kendall or anyone else into believing this conspiracy theory once again steven's comments do not reach not out to the podcast. microphone people <laughs> we can connect through the spirit we'll connect through the sound steven's comments are his and we will his be, own we'll not be united the, the podcast that's that's a lie everyone condones us <laughs> we're all in agreement <laughs> and we just want to say good night to everyone except mm. the pretenders to the crown of downtown west good night everyone Adios. See you.